Uh, I want to talk about Carleton College's uh, proud part in the announcement of the observation of gravitational waves from a binary black hole merger. That was the uh, title of the LIGO discovery paper that was uh, announced yesterday. Carleton College has been a member of the LIGO scientific collaboration since 1999. And almost every LIGO paper that's appeared uh, using LIGO data, uh, I would say 90% of the papers have a Carleton student as a co-author on those papers. So uh, yesterday's observation uh, announced what we're referring to as GW150914, which is Gravitational Wave Event 150914, which happened on September 14th, 2015, the first day of class on uh, fall term. Uh, here at Carleton. So uh, for those of us who were aware of this event, it was an extremely busy and exciting day. So not only do we have Amy Klobuchar speaking here on campus, we also had other things going on in the background too. Uh, so the detection paper uh, that uh, was, was published yesterday has two Carleton students as co-authors. We have Jailin Lowe and we have Nathaniel Strauss. Both of them are uh, authors on this paper. Uh, the reason they are authors is because of predominantly the work over the last, especially last year, leading up to the beginning of the observing run. Uh, they did a lot of work on different things, but especially uh, characterizing noise and uh, identifying ways to uh, clean the data. At Carl, also on the, on the paper uh, that was published yesterday, there's five Carleton alumni uh, who are, uh, are co-authors as well. They're spread around the... Uh, collaboration. At, in terms of things that contributed to this discovery, uh, Carleton College was the place where what's known as parameter estimation started. So one of the things that came out of uh, yesterday's announcement was the fact that these uh, black holes had masses of approximately 30 and 36 solar masses and we, could, we can decipher that from the signal itself and that, that comes through a process known as parameter estimation. <clears throat> parameter estimation, and, and that, that, that all started here in 1999. Uh, now the parameter estimation group in the LIGO scientific collaboration is probably 50 scientists. It's, it's really an amazingly active region. The other uh, place where students are making significant contributions, especially is in uh, detector characterization and noise studies. So they're uh, helping to clean the LIGO data, and uh, that was very important in leading up to this observation run. So. What we had was two black holes in an orbit around one another. On the bottom is actually what the gravitational wave signal essentially looked like. These two black holes, 30 and 36 solar masses, are rotating around each other. And because they're accelerating one another, they're emitting gravitational waves. And so the system is losing energy and the orbit is decaying. The picture on the bottom is showing how uh, a representation of how space-time itself is curved by the presence of these very uh, significant masses. So the, the black holes are orbiting around e each other. We're getting this nice gravitational wave, as you can see on the bottom. And th the black holes are falling closer and closer to one another, speeding up as they lose more energy. Now the video is slowing. And uh, the, the, the black holes themselves, the spherical black holes, are actually getting deformed and shaped by the presence of the gravi gravitation. They merge into an initially peanut-shaped black hole, which is going to oscillate, giving off gravitational waves until it comes into equilibrium as a spherical black hole. All of this can be deciphered from the waveform at the bottom. What's the, the kicker for the fact that we know we've seen the birth of a black hole is the little bit of ringing at the end of, this, uh, of the signal at, as it damps down there. And that's, that's, that's really the fingerprint of the birth of a black hole. So this is, in terms of the significance of this, uh, it, it, it is astounding. This is 100 years after Einstein predicted, uh, not predicted, came up with the general theory of relativity. And uh, in 1916, he, using his general theory of relativity, predicted the existence of gravitational waves. So we have seen gravitational waves uh, for the first time, and we've seen the death of two black holes and the birth of a new black hole. That is just absolutely astounding. As Nelson briefly mentions, the 
uh, students at Carleton are involved in a couple different areas of research at LIGO. And what I do is I help with the detector characterization and noise hunting. So uh, when other members of the collaboration find noise in the LIGO data, I go out and look into all of the different subsystems of LIGO and try to hunt down that noise and figure out where it's coming from. And it's cool to see how uh, my results uh, posted to an online logbook can generate some good discussion among other members of the collaboration so that we can work to remove that noise and increase the sensitivity of the detector. Well, my specific contribution will be I worked uh, over, well, uh, two summers ago, I worked with a team uh, in France actually on uh, analysis of the old data from scientific run 5, so the fifth run, before the uh, advanced LIGO upgrade. And also um, did the same analysis with some uh, S6 data, where we actually didn't find any gravitational wave um, because of uh, statistical insignificance. Um, but so um, I automatized some procedures so that um, the pipelines can be run automatically um, and be used in uh, future runs. I do. Uh, I also, like Nathaniel, work on detector characterization. So uh, identifying sources of noise and trying to eliminate them from the main uh, data channel. Um, I also work for uh, a GBM unit that's looking for uh, gamma ray bursts from NASA's LISA, um, which is a satellite that's looking for uh, gamma ray bursts from uh, stellar objects, and trying to match them to potential uh, signals that may not be strong enough to identify themselves as a uh, black hole on their own or as a gravitational wave on their own, but could be um, put together to maybe make a stronger candidate. As Nelson mentioned before, a lot of the work that the Carleton Group does is parameter estimation, and that was a project that I did this summer in um, Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, so there's a lot of information that we can gain from a signal. We can learn more about the masses of black holes, but we can also learn about their orientation with respect to each other. Um, and their rel relative distances. Um, and so my work this summer was trying to see as much information that we can extract from the signal as possible. Uh, like Nathaniel, I'm also in the process of thinking out grad school next year. Um, I hope to stay in the collaboration. I'm especially interested in um, what Jacob just talked about, which is uh, combining gravitational wave observations with um, more astronomical observations, so especially with ENM follow-up. A lot of my past work, um, but there's, uh, um, 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 but it's very similar to, um, was very similar to, um, to, uh, to Jacob's, to that, um, I mean that, I mean that I, I mean that I mainly worked on, um, mainly worked on different, um, on different, on differentiating the um the um the uh, noise I mean the I mean the LIGO signal um um uh, from the actual gravitational waves. My name is Ping, and I work with Professor Joe Weisberg on testing gravitational theory with LIGO pulsars. And I think I have to say thank you, Nelson, for having me here at your party. <laughs> and um, <laughs> thank you on behalf of Joe, who's in Amsterdam right now and can't be with us. Um, so yeah, I right now I work with Joe Weisberg on the exact same binary poster system that he and Joe Taylor worked on in the 1970s and 1980s um, on testing gravitational theories, especially Einstein's general relativity, to more with more precision. And what I've been doing in the past two years is looking out for previously unobserved effect or is instrumental systematic bias that might affect our results and just to make the test better and that's what I've been doing the past two years. I've been looking for this since 1983 and you really stop many times along the way and ask yourself are you crazy? <laughs> and uh, but I think it, uh, there's people that have worked far longer on this than myself. My advisor uh, Rainier Weiss started this in the 60s and, uh, or did it start, I mean, really, really pushed this forward in the 60s. And I think that's one of the reasons why the result was so emotional, 
So September 14th, I didn't believe this was a real event. Uh, there was lots of things that could have made it uh, a fake event, like we could have injected a fake signal, for example. And as the day rolled on, the, the, the evidence that this was a, something, that this was not a gravitational wave just crumbled away. And I woke up at 6 in the morning on the 15th and read the latest updates. And then I went for my run that I do every morning, and I got to the middle of Seckler Park. And I stopped and I started shaking. And I realized this is it. It just dawned on me. And uh, yeah, you live for that moment. <laughs> wow, and look at, look, at, look, at, look at what happened yesterday. And that was the story that came out. And it was uh, everyone who's been involved in this project is, is literally shaking. So, you guys shaking? <laughs>